And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Yes? If you're like me, you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast, the Pope on Film. I mean, who is it? We've been doing this since 2014, which is fascinating. Next month will be our Diamond Jubilee. Yes. I just came up with that. Next month, next year is our Diamond Jubilee celebration. Uh, so, uh, if, if, of course, you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast. Everybody is. But only the real fans, the true fans who have been with this podcast since day one, who has seen every episode, who does the cosplaying, who has been to the fan conventions, who have met us at uh, Comic-Con when we did our big panel. In yes. uh in a H, in, in was, Hall H. Hall H, that was yeah. fun. That was that fun. was. I got a great. hand job in Hall H. Nice. Was, yeah. That's why they call it Hall H. I mean, it it was just me, but like it counts. Yeah, it totally counts, especially if you have a split personality. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I, I sat on my left hand for a while, you know. Yeah, make you it know, the stranger. Yeah. So, uh, only the real fans, the true hardcore fans who have been with us since the beginning, the ride or die fans, they would know the two main facts about the both of us. The two undeniably really real and in no way made up on the spot facts about the both of us, America's hottest podcasting couple, Bunny and Maylin. First and foremost, uh, the the first fact, which is about you, Bunny, is that you have an Etsy store. Uh, I do. And, yeah, and you make, and this is true, you make animal sculptures out of dryer lint. And I have always been blown away yes. by your, by this quirky, remarkable talent of yours. So tell us, Bunford. How did you get started making animal sculptures out of dryer lint? And if I can press you, what's next for you? Well, it it's pretty much is only one way that one gets into this. And, you know, if you speak to the larger animal from dryer lint community, it's all basically the same story. One day you have to be emptying out your dryer trap and when you go to throw it in the garbage you notice it just looks like a bunny so and that's it that's where it begins so you make that into a bunny a very crude bunny it's it's bluish and it's shaped out of rubber bands and things of that nature uh, i i am now currently working on the incredibly rare and nearly extinct Tasmanian beaver. Nice. Uh, so I, I am going through a process of drawing different types of fabrics. I mean, because you can't just separate, like, colors from whites. You right. know, that just doesn't work. You want to do a whole load of genes, you know, to get that good blue lint, you know. Uh, you, you can't might separate... want to wash your favorite felt blanket. You can't separate colors from whites because it's not the 1950s. This is true. This is also true. Yeah. Well, thank you for giving us an insight into your um, process. Also, to be clear, my wife Tasha wrote that one. I've been getting the kids to write them, but this time Natasha took uh -huh. the reins. And the second fact, which is about me, is that I'm a lover of history. I love it, but I'm also a storyteller. So what I like to do at this uh, podcast segment is I like to get a story from the history books, maybe one that people don't know too well, and reword it via my own unique storytelling style. And that is what this is, another educationally uneducational installment of historic approximations, or as we like to call it, 
Dun, Former, dun, 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 dun. Oh, not about that part. Formerly Steve's historic approximations, or SHAP as we called it, for a number of years we called it that repeatedly, annoyingly, whether anyone wanted us to or not. But as catchy a name as SHAP was, well, a dead name is a dead name, and so we are moving on! Boom! Big reveal! I'm a pickle! This week, though, it's going to be a bit of a short one, it's going to be a bit of a different one, um, because I was looking for a SHAP. And I wasn't sure which chap. And now I know exactly which chap it's going to be. But that's going to be for next week. This week, I decided to just uh, talk about my year. <laughs> to talk about what I have been through, my successes and accomplishments. I have been talking about this a lot on social media lately. I'm really proud of myself and how far I have come. But I want to be clear. I'm not being conceited. I'm not. I'm, when I when I'm saying, "Hey, look at my year," I'm not saying it like my older brother. Hey, look at my year and how better it is than yours. It I'm I'm just sharing what I have gone through because literally I was at the lowest point of my life and now I am very high, and I'm not just saying that because the edibles kicked in. So I I'm just trying I, I'm trying to remind myself of how far I have come, and sort of give myself a pat on the back. I started out the year in a very dark place in my own mental uh, prison. I was suicidal and I have crawled from the depths of hell and I have a new leash on life. And, and I, I started transitioning this past summer, which is something I never thought that I would want. But I just it, I, I dove right into it and I've been transitioning since uh, the beginning. Beginning of summer 2022, I've got a, a bit of a pair. I told my brother that I was transitioning. I came out to my brother. I came out to my parents that I'm transitioning and my name is Maylin. And my brother being my brother, he texted me. So you're a chick now. You got boobs. I'm not I'm not being crude and don't show me. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I got boobs. <laughs> Why do you want to be a chick anyway? Because, uh, you know, uh, I used to clean the bathrooms at the bar in Sacramento. And, dude, uh, chicks' bathrooms are nasty, dude. Why would you want to Why would you wanna go and pee in a chick bathroom? Hey, I, I don't mean to be offensive. I'm, I, just, I just say what's on my mind. Oh, what's that great line that Benoit Blanc says in Glass Onion? I have not seen it yet. You haven't seen it yet? I just you grabbed it last. Seen it yet. I just grabbed it last night. Love that freaking movie. I was lucky enough to see it twice before it came out on Netflix. And I it, I just absolutely love the film. And it came out at like the exact right time because most of the people who watch glass onion this isn't in any way a spoiler it just helps to know to go into glass onion knowing that elon musk is a fucking idiot yes that helps glass onion really yeah the more okay. the morning that i saw glass onion i'm like oh man i'm going to see glass onion tonight i'm so excited calm down calm down it's still a lot, a number of hours to go. Why don't you sit down and watch some YouTube? And I watched a, uh, like a video from Adam Conover and, about, and, uh, and Edward Norton is in it, isn't he? Yeah. 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 All um, those pieces are coming together now. Yeah. Uh, there was a, what, there's a wonderful video that Adam Conover did on YouTube and it's, uh, it's titled, there's no such thing as a good billionaire. And I watched that uh, that d little video on YouTube, and then that night I saw a glass onion, and it's like, oh wow, the, 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 those two things work together so well that oh, it's a really great. Movie. I liked it better than the first one, which says a lot. Yeah, but um, it's a really good movie. I saw it with Mal and and uh, and my wife and. Got really into it. Got really into it. It's really good. There's some great acting in that. Um, 
So I'm transitioning, which is crazy. I'm hungry 24 seven. Uh, when I wake up, my chest is in massive pain. As far as I can tell, most of the breast growing is happening while I'm asleep. Um, well, that's when the titty fairy comes. I guess. I guess. Um, the hair growth hasn't stopped. That's been the hardest part about transitioning is that, uh, this facial hair will not freaking stop. It won't. Stop coming. So now I'm actually uh trying to figure out with my um um medical insurance that they do pay for some transitioning. Yeah, so yeah. I'm looking to uh I have a surgery coming up this week, uh, and that's just the first of hopefully a series of surgeries to help me with my um mental health. And I'm hoping to get electrolysis on my face to stop the the. I I used to shave maybe like three times a year, and now I'm shaving twice a day, and it's my skin is pissed about it. Yeah, it is angry. Hopefully, in the next couple of months, the hair growth will start slowing down, according to everything that I've read, but. I, I've got black hair. I've got natural black hair. And when it comes through my freaking mocha chocolate yaya skin, it looks so in your face. And I hate it. It gives me a uh, what's the word, Mal? Body dysmorbin. It gives me body dysmorbin. Is it dysmorbin time? It's dysmorbin time. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things that I did when I climbed out of hell is that I decided to go back to church. I just missed it. I, we, I was a Catholic for a very long time and I, I, I started getting spiritual again and I thought that, you know, if I'm trying to be if I'm trying to self-improve myself and be a better person, not that I was a horrible person before, thank you, Bunny. Right. But if I'm trying to be a better person, maybe finding a church to go to would be good. So Oh, thank, thank, uh, thanks to my wife. I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna, you know, wake up early on Saturday, go to like a 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. service, sure. just, you know, put on like a nice shirt and a tie. And it was Natasha who said, wait a second, are you, aren't you going to go to church as a woman? And I said, well, I wasn't, I actually wasn't sure about that. And my wife was the one who said, if you can't go to a church as your authentic female self, then you shouldn't be going to that church. True. And I was like, but it's Oklahoma. I'm already a freaking Mexican minority. I, I'm, you know, I already have, I'm a pansexual Latina trans woman. I already have so many, you know, checks after my name that, I, I don't want people to get angry at me, but so I woke up the that, you know, that first morning and I'm like, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to make myself some coffee. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to check out the news and. Crap. OK, I'm going to pick a dress. And so I went to uh, this big, massive Catholic church. Where Jim Thorpe was buried. OK. Because uh, we did a whole shap about that. Uh, Jim Thorpe had his funeral at that church. Yes. Um, I would go into this big, massive, like, strict Catholic church, at, and I'd go in as a woman, and, and it felt at the time that, like, Operation Trans Woman in Church is a success. <laughs> so far, no one knows. And I'm, like, live tweeting every single solitary mass, and and, you know, I, I, I went to that church for about two months and I went every Sunday and I talked to one person. Yeah. Ever. Nobody else wanted to sit next to me or talk to me or nothing. No one wanted anything to do with me. And the, the final like kicker that made me leave that Catholic church was, um, I I I would wear a mask. Hardly anyone would wear masks, so I'm wearing a mask, and I'm I'm 
going to get the body and blood of Christ. And right before I get to the priest who gives me the body, I will lower my mask. And amen. Okay, thank you for the cracker. Hum, 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 hum. And I put the mask back on. And then I walk over to the person who's giving the blood of Christ. And they say, and I put my mask down. I say, amen. I take the chalice. I drink the blood. I go and sit down. It was the beginning of May. And there's the priest. And the priest just, he's not even really looking. He's just going through the, the body of Christ, the bread of salvation. Amen. Okay. Hum, hum, hum. But then I move on to the an old white woman, real Karen looking chick in an expensive ass outfit who is giving out the blood of Christ. And I put my mask down and I, I think that I was hot that day because it was like May. And so the face makeup had started to come off and she could see like my five o'clock shadow coming in and she just stared at me and wouldn't give me the blood of Christ. Okay. She just stared. She was just... And I'm just staring at her. And then the person behind me is also ready to get... A, like, a, and, and then I wasn't sure what to do. Do Like, have I been found out? Do I leave now? Am I in trouble? Am I going to hell? But thankfully, event after like a good, hard, like six seconds of silence and awkward stares, finally the Southern hospitality kicked in and she goes, the, the blood, the, the blood, the blood of Christ. And I go, amen. And I drink it. And that's when I go, OK, I can't be Catholic anymore. I can't come in here. I can't I can't do it. I got to find some other place to go. Stop making fun of me, Eleanor. So I was like, I want to go to church. I want to go to a church. I want to find a group, an organization, <laughs> people that want to talk to me, people that I that that I can go to church with and be a member of this church. And but obviously Catholicism doesn't want me. So there's got to be something. And then I remember that every single solitary gay pride event that I have ever been to, there were always Episcopalians there. So you. Yeah, I'll get you the charger. So I started going to the Episcopalian church and it's super nice and, and friendly. And I'm, I'm, um, you know, there's other trans women there. I've met some lovely, uh, uh, gay married couples at my church. Uh, everyone's super nice. This woman gave me a bunch of her really expensive jackets the other day. Yeah. I don't think I'm ever going to wear them because I can't reach that level of Karen, but uh, everyone's super nice and the priest is really nice. And, and uh, Episcopalianism is just like um, the good Catholic because it's like, hey, we're Episcopalians. We're essentially Catholic, but um, I'm a priest and I'm married and I have kids. So the simple fact that I'm able to screw fixes a lot of problems with the Catholic Church. Yeah. And uh, they believe in science, and they believe in evolution, and they believe in, in thinking properly, and just, just critical thinking. Yeah. Their main, their main tenet is, hey, be nice to people, even people you disagree with. And it's like, okay, that's... This is, this is how all Christians should be acting. Yeah, You know, they do a lot of great stuff for the homeless and they feed a lot of people and it, 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 they have these free dinners and they give out free sack lunches downtown. And it's just such a nice church full of good people and, and just makes me feel a lot better. I'm going to read at church during mass on uh, the 22nd, our, our next episode of the podcast, I will have read at church as a woman, and I'm pretty excited about that. Okay. I lost 47 pounds. That's almost my six-year-old. I lost an entire six-year-old of weight. Oh, and I'm yeah. really excited about that. I'm actually feeling comfortable with my body. I'm just wearing a bralette right now, like I'm a uh, uh, Selena, the singer, 
Uh, we're back to doing the show. I love the show. I'm really excited for uh, 2023 because while we were doing uh, the the summer of uh, COVID exploitation, I was finding some real bizarre out there shit. Yes, so sure. we are going to be watching some like good movies and popular movies. But we're also going to go to some weird ass places. I, I've got a bizarre 80s supernatural foreign horror American art house slasher supernatural. I've got a bizarre ass movie for next episode. Hey, I still have a copy of Skate Town USA. Skate Town USA. Ooh, yes. nice. We might go for that. Uh, so, yeah, I'm really excited for this year for the show. Uh, my relationship with my wife is really strong right now. We're 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 uh we're doing great. There are these pills. I'm gonna do a short review now of okay. um there are these pills. I believe they're called nineteen they're from the company nineteen oh six, and they're like half uh THC and half C B D and some all natural ingredients and yada yada yada. And it, they are different pills for different ways you want to feel. There are go pills for energy. There's bright pills and they're to help your intelligence. And there are um, sleepy pills. There's awake pills. I've been using um, bliss pills and they get me a little bit high, but not paranoid high, just a sort of like, hi kids, I love you. Yeah, because he's so nice. I'm just gonna go hang out with my wife. Oh, I love her so much. Hey, do you want to go to the store? That'll be fun. Hey, kid, do you want to go to the park? You know, it it gives me like a nice euphoric feeling where I'm really happy go lucky. We tried a new pill. It's called Love, and uh, I didn't try the pill. My wife tried the pill, but let me tell you, super effective. And yeah. Let's just even at that another thing that i'm happy to say um i'm gonna say it as best i can um i am trans and i've been transitioning since last summer but um all of the equipment still works a-okay everything all of it still works fine and I'm excited about that. I'm going to uh, uh, I'm getting um, surgery this Thursday. I'm getting a vasectomy. OK, I, I'm not bringing one of my kids to my vasectomy. No, yeah. I'm not doing that. No, what? But I have decided that I'm going to my vasectomy as my authentic self. I'm going to have my uh, emerald do my makeup. I'm going to wear my best outfit. And it's like, okay, uh, vasectomy? That's me! Wake, you know, stand up in, like, big high heels and, like, my face all did. I'm really excited to go as a woman to my vasectomy. Yes. That's very much me. I, 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 I found my vasectomy horribly amusing. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Starting with like the night before where, where, I mean, first I didn't have like a regular doctor, so I just had to dig up a doctor. And then, uh, and there was just like no connection with this fucking dude. And then the night before I'm sitting there and I'm watching TV and I'm just flipping through the channels. And it was some kind of national, national geographic thing. Where they had tranked a baboon on the plains of the fucking Serengeti and are giving him a vasectomy. And I'm like, I don't need this right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. I really don't need this. My doctor wrote me a prescription for one Valium. Yeah. And, yep. and I, I, I Gave it to the pharmacist. I had to get some gold blonde bond for the uh, for the shaving and everything, mm -hmm. uh, or whatever the fuck that stuff was. Yeah. Uh, and he gives me one Valium, and I was like, 
what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> yeah, I was a little bit scared to learn that they're not knocking me out. Yeah. I'm not going under. I'll be awake for the entire thing. And it's yeah. like, aw, you're not going to give me any laughing gas? Then what's the point? Now, at get one all- point, this asshole doctor... I can only imagine, but it seems like he got his rubber glove accidentally clipped into the forceps. Mm-hmm. So there was a point where there was an audible loud snapping sound uh. coming from my nuts. <laughs> well, I'm happy to I know don't that I can like weed. that. I'm happy to know that I am legally capable of of um, ingesting marijuana. Yeah. You know, that helps me feel less scared about the idea of getting um, my vast deference snipped. Yes. Uh, I came out as... Uh, trans and uh, transitioning to my parents and to my brother and to my uh, kid-friendly YouTube channel. That one was actually harder than any of the other coming outs that I've ever done. I marched in a pride parade as the proud trans woman that I am. I I think it really helped my wife at her job because her job is very uh, gay-friendly and they, they march in the pride parade every year. I've marched twice in pride parades for with my wife's company and i showed up to my wife's company's booth you know as a trans woman with a trans flag and all excited to march and here comes these two people talking to me turns out they're like ceos and they're trans and they're married and i'm having this massive conversation with these people that i don't know are like a big deal that are like executives in the company so that's positive. Uh, I went out in a two-piece bathing suit. Yes, yes it's it, January. Yes, it's January. I, can, I can't. I can't. See, I can't help. I cannot. I cannot put those two things together in my head. The thing that's amazing. I understand the it's the YMCA. It's you know? so weird because in Oklahoma, it's literally October. A little bit chilly. November, get a sweater. December, it's a little bit cold. January 1st, ice everywhere. (laughs) Massive storm. People gonna die. But it's been the, this is the first January in Oklahoma where we haven't just gotten a massive snow and ice storm. It's been beautiful. I've been out and about in my backyard and my porch, just in my little bralette and my little yoga pants. Just it's a it's it's like 60 degrees out right now. Yeah. It is beautiful. And I've been so happy about that. My wife says that she's nervous because that means that when the storms do come, they're going to be effing horrible. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm, 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 it, I was really nervous to go out in a, in a, cause I told the kids in like October, November, my, uh, my chest was growing bigger, uh, quicker than I thought. And I told the kids, it's like, Hey, I know that I take you kids to the Y swimming all the time, but the next time I go to the Y, I am going to need a bathing suit, an actual female bathing suit. I can't just go as your, um, parent anymore without a shirt i need to female present when i go swimming and i had never done that before and i was all nervous and, and, uh, one. okay one of my uh old friends from high school said and i was I, this made me feel so good that um being embarrassed of going out in a two-piece two-piece bathing suit in public is the quintessential female experience This is something every woman has had to do, has gone through. And yes, it is horrible. 
Welcome to the sisterhood of women, <laughs> Malin. This is something we have all done. I'm getting attacked fairly regularly online, but I, I don't really care anymore. I think it's funny. It's like 75% British people. Thanks, JK. Really? Yeah. As as dangerous as it is for trans people in America, it's even worse for trans British people. Really? Yeah, it is. It, it is fucking horrible over there for trans people. It is the worst. And most of the people that attack me are freaking Brits. And it's like freaking go go listen to John Cleese talk about how cancel culture is horrible. And leave me alone. I am an American. I believe in freedom. This I, may... I, I just don't see how what other people do with their lives affect me. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Okay. My, my best friend my... wears a bralette now. All right. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean... What's between... What's between my legs ain't none of your business. Yeah. Doesn't matter. So, uh, my wife and I will be celebrating our 18th wedding anniversary this May. Excited yes. about that. Uh, I believe the Guardians of the Galaxy movie comes out on our anniversary. Ah! We we got there's, married on there Cinco is there it has traditionally been a move a Marvel movie a Marvel movie every anniversary for your yeah. anniversary it's been wonderful I don't know why they're constantly releasing <laughs> Marvel movies on Cinco de Mayo but hey Cinco de Marvel they should do that they should call it that Cinco de Marvel uh. I'm 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 getting a vasectomy this Thursday. I'm also looking into some other surgeries, electrolysis for my face, possibly some facial feminization surgery if my um uh health insurance covers it. And even if it doesn't, I'm thinking of just starting a GoFundMe. Every trans person has a GoFundMe to help to 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 get money to help them with uh yeah. surgery stuff. And I you know, I I had a successful I had a successful GoFundMe to purchase an $80 Halloween costume. Yeah, so maybe I can get one for uh, making me look more like a woman. But hey, I ran in a race. Oh, yes. I ran in a race this year, yeah. this past year. I came in 11th place in the women and 28th place overall because I'm healthy. Isn't that something? And I'm working again, making money, and I'm I'm back in therapy. I'm feeling really good about myself, and and I've been I've been talking about how successful 2022 was to everyone who will listen because it makes me feel better to see how far I have come. And yes. thank you, Bunny, because you really did help with a lot of that, and, and I appreciate you, and I love you oh, so much. Buddy. Thank you. I just want you to know that. Next week, we will be talking about the 1970s King Kong movie. Okay. That's what we will be talking about next week. I love the fact that, like, okay, this is a guy in an outfit. This is a guy in a rubber uh, King Kong outfit. And uh, this is a uh, giant hand. Yeah. And this is some uh, model work. And then... They just built like a 50 foot King Kong robot. Yeah. And then it, it's fascinating to see the like behind the scenes stuff where it's like, oh, here's some trick camera angles. Here's some other trick camera angles. Here's a slow ass fucking robot. Yes. It, it, it's mind blowing to me. But I learned something new about the uh, 1970s King Kong movie that I have to talk about. Uh, so we will be talking about that next week. So join us next week for another historic approximations, or as we like to call it, and cut on that. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs>